Good morning, everyone. It's November the 3rd, 2015. Time to kick off another trading day. Uh, today's going to be kind of interesting. Um, the rally in the stock market yesterday was attributed to a short squeeze. Uh, the um, start of the month, uh, it was even um, more pronounced than it was uh, on October the 1st, the first trading day of October. Uh, Sometimes it follows through, sometimes it doesn't. So we, we don't have a tendency to trade off of right now. Uh, what we do have, though, is the uh, treasuries are in a B, and they are pointed lower. And if the stock market can hold its gains and trade a little bit higher, we should even be, be lower yet. Uh, the low volume numbers well below us right now. You can see uh, 126.28. We're going to have some reasonable support. In the uh, 8 area, 27, 8, 10 and a half is where it starts out. So uh, will this market break or not? That's going to be the issue. Uh, we do have <coughs> some uh, news this morning. We have Gallup's consumer uh, index. And it was minus 14 last month. I don't know what it will be this month. Then we have factory orders at minus nine tenths. Um, if it comes in like that, the Fed can't raise interest rates. Although there's several articles out again that the Fed is going to raise interest rates come December no matter what happens. <coughs> and that comes from Fed governors getting out there speaking saying the end is near. Uh, we have the IBD tip um, Business Optimism Index, 47.5. Uh, no one pays any attention to that as far as trading goes. And then we have auto truck sales. And I see discounts everywhere. Uh, they're making a lot of money. I mean, you can get a $10,000 discount on some of these pickup trucks, and it's 17.8. Uh, if that is the case, that's a pretty healthy number. Uh, the first article I put into the room uh, this morning was uh, the case for stocks, uh, the bullish case for stocks, six reasons. And uh, we have to remember that there are two sides to the market. So I think the focus will be factory orders and then auto and truck sales. And uh, the auto and truck sales could counter the factory orders. <coughs> We'll have to see what happens. So uh, the market is pointed lower. Uh, I'd like to sell the 16 to um, uh, 20 area. So 15s to 19s will be sell one. Uh, hopefully we can get it off a little bit higher than 23, 27, sell two. On the buy side, I think we're headed a little bit lower. <coughs> but again, if the factory orders numbers come in as such, I don't think we can really break the market because that in and of itself will be supportive. So buy one will be five to nine, somewhat aggressive, and 29 to 01 for buy two. Uh, don't have a real strong feel this morning. Just kind of have to wait and see what unfolds. And sometimes that's not, not all bad. You just trade what you see and don't worry too much about what you think or believe will happen. And it's always important to trade what you see. It's all fine and good that I say higher or lower. Uh, but uh, again, if what I see manifests itself in the marketplace, it is a stronger trade. Uh, if I didn't see it, you can still trade it the other way, too. OK, uh, looking at the 30-year. Last rotate up was 31, so 31 to 03, sell one. That's basically where we were yesterday. Then if we do get up and manage to take out these highs, we've got this area right here. So 11 to 15, sell two. On the buy side, this thing overruns everything that we, every place we think it should stop. So 13 to 17, buy one. And then 1 to 5 by 2. 155 is a round number. Uh, it's a pretty obvious trading target. Uh, the best support starts at 54.24.
to 55, so that's within reach. So we got a B. We are pointed lower. I've seen weaker or stronger Bs. Volume is above time. Uh, if the selling happens, it should happen early in the session. Uh, the overnight news, as far as um, China goes, uh, banking conditions, uh, $3 trillion worth of non-performing loans was one, the, just one article. Uh, the other one was the shadow banking system. Uh, uh, loans jumped a trillion dollars, and, and I have no, I, I don't have any idea how they can measure what the shadow banking system is, or actually how they measure anything that comes out of China. I mean, the, you think that we cook our numbers. Uh, you can get shot over there for not saying what the government wants you, wants you to say. Um, so, <clears throat> the uh, international tensions are increasing. Our Department of Defense said twice a quarter we're going to steam past China's uh, um, um, islands. Okay, we have support 25 to 27. We got a high volume number at 23. That could be the attractor. We'll put it there. In fact, let's make it 26, 24. We'll lean against that high volume number if we're by two. Uh, London high was 36. We're currently at 31. Uh, they've notched it down, so 34, 36, sell 1, and then 39, 41, sell 2. Uh, tensions are increasing in the Middle East. Um, you wonder why Putin does these expeditionary, uh, when his country's damn near broke. One, war usually supports oil prices. That hasn't worked out as planned yet. Uh, but we're so close to each other. I mean, so many different spots in the world. A, it would be really easy for uh, an an incident to set to, to get uh, people to pull other triggers. Uh, so, I mean, tensions around the world. I mean, everybody's kind of walking around tippy toe, and um, they could increase. Uh, we could have an accidental something that would escalate the tensions quickly. Um, a lot of wars get started on a saving face basis. Okay, the last rotate up in London stopped at 21. Uh, then we're at 3. So uh, we're going to have our first cell is going to be 110 plus or minus. Then 25 for cell 2. Do like the short side of the market. Um, got the attractor here at 75, and that's where we are right now. So buy 1. 75 by 250. See the um, euro drifting lower. I don't see um, a, a big move one way or the other today. Don't have on. Um, they're already through their news cycle, and nothing happened. So, don't think anything will happen here. In our trading hours that will change things. But again, we just you know you, you get up, you get your chance uh, at the plate, you take your swings, and you see what happens. Okay, crude oil uh, again. <coughs> uh, it's drawn to round numbers, so. 4675, 47, sell one. Pretty much where we were last night. Didn't quite make 75. Then 47 and a quarter, 4750, sell two. Uh, it's been interesting that the drumbeat of war, you know, the sounds of war, or news articles on escalation in the Middle East have had no impact on oil prices. Kind of shows you how much supply is out there and how much storage, how much crude at these lower prices has been put into storage. Uh, the negative articles that we see say that uh, China's storage is filled up. Hard to know where they got that kind of information, but then we're going to make 45, 45 and a quarter for buy two. So, going to buy just under 46, let them get stops beneath that. We're going to sell into 47. 
Second buy is against that round number at 45. Okay, we touched 21 briefly yesterday. Uh, the rallies in any market always go further than anybody thinks they can go. Thinks that they will go. Uh, let's take a look at the F1. We got this high right here. Uh, if we get through 2100, 2107, 2110, would be the next spot that you would anticipate the market going to. And if we get through that, we've got a lot of activity in the 2025 area, then it's 35. So 7 to 10, 2100, 21, 7 to 10, 21, 20 to 25, and then 21, 35, 37. And then after that, it's on to new contract highs now. This is really, really interesting what is happening overnight keep losing a letter. I had a KJ, KG yesterday, now I've got an H. F should be Sunday, G should be Monday, and uh, H should be Tuesday. Let's see if this changes right here. Huh. Let's talk to Peter about that. So here we are, and you can see that we have on the E mini F2 screen 30 minute, and you can see all the volume is in the bottom half of the distribution. And if we do a London split right there, high in London, you can see that we have rejected prices basically above 95. So how low can we go? We've got this D low at 83.50. We've got an E low at 84.50. We've got an F low at 85. We've got a G low at uh, 85.50. So this 85 area plus or minus a couple is pretty good support. So play for a little weakness. We've got a high volume number at 88. So we'll make um, 87, 85 by 1. And we got the C low at 82 and the gap down there 79 to 82 by 2. On the uh, sell side, 95 to the buck. Then 5 to 10. Factory orders. Minus 0.9, that's the most bullish piece of news we'll see today, probably for the E-mini, then auto and truck sales, 17.8. When the automobile industry is cranking them out at 16 million per year, they're in tall cotton. 17.8 is a huge number, so... Um, that's what we have. <laughs> get these numbers copied down. It's going to take a bit to get everything posted. Get busy on that. Best supports in that 80 to 85 area on the E-mini. Best resistances in that right now is uh, uh, the 98 to 2100. Well, Jeff, according to maritime law, the international uh, waters are 12 miles offshore. And if China was to sink a ship outside of the 12-mile deal, it would be an act of war.